Hey guys, welcome back to DOS Storm. So today we're taking a look at yet another game controller. This one is the Thrustmaster Rage 3D. If you follow me at all, uh, you'll know that a while back I did a video on another controller, which was the Gravis Destroyer Tilt. And that was a motion controller, and that was a sort of a weird one. This is more of a normal controller, but it is a very early controller that appears to have an analog stick. There's actually uh, apparently a switch on it that switches from an analog stick mode to a just functioning as a regular eight-way D-pad. So I'm excited to unbox this thing. It has never been taken out of the box. It still has all the software, all the manuals, and all the weird smells that are likely inside the box from sitting over time. So I'm excited to get that out there and sniff it and to play with it. And I don't really know where I'm going with that. Let's take a look inside the box, but first let's have a word from our sponsor of this video today, which is PCBWay. PCBWay.com is your one-stop shop to make your next electronics project happen. They of course specialize in producing PCB boards to your exact specifications, but they also provide custom 3D printing, CNC machining, fabrication, and injection molding at affordable prices. Don't have any project ideas? PCBWay also has an awesome community with hundreds of great user submitted projects to get your creative juices flowing. So what are you waiting for? Check out the link below for more information. Slam it down. So this is the Rage 3D, made by Thrustmaster, which I would assume sometime in uh, the mid 90s or something, or there's a reference to PowerPlay NHL uh, 1998. So I assume this is 99, 98. That's a speculation. Might have came out before that. I know there are some other controllers that look like this. There is the Thrustmaster Fusion, which actually on the back of the box, interestingly, uh, pretends and says something about how this controller can give you more frames per second. Uh, this one doesn't make any claims like that. Uh, unfortunately on the back of the box, but there's some interesting things about it It says it also has some software with it, uh, which allows you actually to map any of the buttons on here uh, Two buttons on the keyboard or mouse which could be incredibly useful if it actually works in DOS games that don't let you use more than like uh, I don't know uh, four buttons on a controller But I don't know how that works if it just shows up as a controller or what it also says a million times how digital the thing is and that is 100% digital and it has all these buttons and I don't know. We're gonna open it up and find out. All right, so that's it out of the plastic. Let's open the box. Okay, it's still sealed in plastic. Looks perfect though. Whoa, okay, that is weird. So it does kind of feel like an analog stick, but not like a modern analog stick. It's like just a ball with like some grip on it. What happens if you switch the 2D? Okay, so it kind of like locks it in place so it functions more like a D-pad then. So we got, uh, what was it, six buttons and some weird buttons up here and then some shoulder buttons. Overall, it actually, like, looking at it before, I was like, man, there's no way that thing could be comfortable, but actually I can kind of see how this could be kind of comfy. Yeah. So it is a game port controller, but it looks like you can actually plug this in and sort of daisy chain it. Um, so you could have more than one. But yeah, this thing looks really cool. I'm kind of excited to try it. So let's just, uh, let's set that aside for now. Let's look at the, wait a minute. Where's the saw? So okay, let me check the other box. Okay, all right, so it does have software and a manual. It was just stuck in the box. Okay, I was gonna be ready to be really disappointed. Okay, so we have what looks like a registration card, and then we have some software, which I assume has some game demos and stuff on it as well. Hopefully that's coming into focus. Then we have the manual. 
actually a lot more like manual you know, than you'd usually get with a controller. So I would assume this was a pretty premium controller back in the day. So yeah, it looks like um, that you can daisy chain up to four of these uh, for multiplayer. That would be really interesting. I'd like to see that in action. So we also have the software and stuff in here. But enough of that. Let's actually get to using this thing. So let's set it up on my computer and we're going to check it out. All right, guys, so this is the point of the video where I grab the controller and actually play some games and give you my thoughts on it. So we're going to play some Windows games and some DOS games, of course, because this is DOS Storm. Okay, so before I start a game or something, uh, I'll just go to the control panel and show you a few things that I might not have mentioned about the controller. Um, so it does have 10 buttons. Um, these buttons are actually the same as the rear trigger buttons. So. That's just something to keep in mind. And then you have these six face buttons and then you have start and select. And those are the buttons. So it's in analog stick mode right now and you see how that moves. It moves nice and gradual and you have pretty fine control over it. If you switch it to 2D mode, it behaves just like an eight way D-pad. And it still feels kind of loose like an analog stick, but it's locked into position. So with that out of the way, let's get into some games and I'll show you how it works. So the first game I'm going to play is Moto Racer again. I know I played Moto Racer in the other video, but it came with this and this is just such a perfect game for testing out controllers. So Moto Racer is the first game we're going to play. All right. I'm going to enter my name. That's my name. So let's try the let's play solo here and we'll do a single race and we'll just see how this thing controls. I have my camera here pointed at the controller, so you should be able to see how it reacts in real time. So let's just start a race. Okay. So already I can tell that I have uh, gradual control, so it, it actually is like sensitive. So this is a real analog stick, obviously. Um, and it actually works perfect in this game. I've... This is probably actually one of the better ways I've played this game that isn't with a modern controller. So, it's saying something. So just curiously, um, if I pause and switch to 2D mode, which you can switch with this switch, as I showed before, let's see what the difference is there. See, obviously, uh, there I don't have the nuance control. I can't do slow turns. I can just do all or nothing, which makes sense. Being as that mode switches it. Let's switch it back to 3D. Yeah, so now I can... Oop, I think I wouldn't have bumped in me. I can take turns slow or gradual. So yeah, this thing is great for racing games. Feels pretty good to me, at least. Let's try it with something else. All right, so second game I'm going to try is Croc Legend of Gabos. Uh, this is a game I played a lot as a kid, and I figured it would be pretty decent since it's a uh, sort of a platformer and sort of should have fine control, hopefully. And we'll see. All right, so I have it in the analog mode right now. It doesn't feel too bad. It... Uh... Trying to think if, no, it kind of doesn't seem like this game is supporting the analog stick. So let me, let me switch it to 2D and see. Okay, yeah, that actually feels a lot better for this game. So, yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind. Even though this is like a, the time period that this game would have been released, but it doesn't appear to support this kind of joystick. It just supports the digital control, not the analog stick. That said, seems to be controlling pretty well. Definitely not bad. And the overall comfort of this thing, while I would say it's like not as comfortable as like a modern controller, like an Xbox controller, which is probably my favorite modern controller, but it is, it is pretty decent. It's definitely, overall it's already pretty decent. Uh, the D-pad feels pretty good on a game like this. 
considering back in the day I played this like on a graphics gamepad, this is like amazing. It feels like I'm playing it on a PlayStation almost. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely get used to this. This is great. Plays great. But anyway, let's try it maybe with some DOS games. And maybe I'll get into the software a little bit as well. All right, so this thing actually comes with two bits of software. Uh, the first one is called, where's it at here? is just called the Rage Activator. And I'm pretty sure all this does, aside from the goofy interface, is basically just let you test the buttons on your controller. And I believe um, you can connect, if you connect multiple controllers, you can activate, and I think it adds it to Windows. But other than that, this thing doesn't really do anything. It does make funny noises. Uh, but the other piece of software, the Thrust Mapper, actually can do an awful lot. So. What you can do here is you can just add a new game and you can go to any executable on your computer and you can make profiles for it. So and after you make a profile, you can right click and make a script. So after you make a script, like I did here for uh, Radix, uh, is you can map buttons on your keyboard to buttons on the controller. So I can press a button here, let's say button five, and I can say what key sequence. Let's say I want that button five to map to G on the keyboard and then I could save it. You can also save it to do multiple keys at once, uh, like that. Unfortunately, you can't set it to use uh, mouse clicks or anything like that, but still, it's pretty cool. I did do a few things with Radix here, which I'll show you once we get into the games. So let's start the game. Let's try a game of Radix with these settings. Come on, Radix. Ooh. Hmm. One computer restart later. All right, so let's load this up. Let's try this again. All right, so. So I did a few things. I made start and select, enter and escape so I can pause the game and go back. And that seems to work. I don't think this game supports like analog. No, it doesn't. Descent does, actually. So you can play this with Descent and actually have uh, analog control. But this game is not, so I'm just gonna switch it back to 2D because it feels better. But like I said, I added those map button maps. So I can press Start, and it's like a pause menu, which normally that would be Escape, and you couldn't map that to the, uh, to the joystick in any other way. I can also uh, press Select is Enter, which looks at the back of my ship. Yeah, this is a great game. I don't know, this, this game's kind of underrated in my opinion. It's kind of like a cross between um, Descent and Doom a little bit. But yeah, it's made, published by Epic, but it never really went anywhere. Quite enjoy it. But yeah, for a game like this, 3D, uh, feels pretty good. I mean, I'm not using the 3D mode, but the D-pad on this thing seems to do well for a game like this. And like I said, again, you're not really benefiting from putting it in analog mode because you don't get the nuanced control of an analog stick, at least for this game. So let's go to a game that will make use of the actual D-pad and see how it controls in a game that isn't 3D space. Let's see, let's try like a side scroller. All right, so for our last game, we're gonna try Realms of Chaos, which is a side scroller for DOS. You know, I really feel like more games should start out with ah! Don't you? All right. Yeah. All right. So yeah, this feels pretty natural. Um, natural in that I'm not very good at it as well. Odd thing in these, some of these old games is it likes to separate the buttons so like, Button one, I think, is like the back of the controller, which is kind of odd. Um, but 
But overall, this game controls pretty well. Uh, like I said, it doesn't mean we good at it. So despite me being horrible at this game, it actually does feel pretty natural to can play it with this. Uh, certainly, actually, for at least for this game, I would definitely prefer playing it with this rather than a keyboard. And I'm just bad. So that concludes our look at the Thrustmaster Rage 3D. By modern standards, it certainly is a quirky design, but it's a unique idea to merge a D-pad with an analog stick. It's definitely worth trying out if you see one in the wild. If anyone is interested, I will also be uploading this software disc to archive.org for your downloading pleasure. If you got this far in the video, thanks for watching. This one ran kinda long. And if you thought it was cool, give me a sub or browse my other content. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys later.